Hello everyone, I'm Leo. In today's video, I will show you how to make a sticky rice ball covered by azuki bean paste called ohagi. It can be eaten anytime during the year, but it has an especially important meaning around spring equinox and autumn equinox. Later, I'll explain the interesting reasoning behind traditional seasonal event around both equinoxes in Japan called Kigan. The people of ancient Japan created many seasonal events, ceremonies, and festivals throughout their long history. Along with these things, one whole dietary culture has also been developed. Ohagi, which I will show you in this video, is one of them and is not just a Japanese dessert. Though a uh, traditional culture might sound like an old folktale, but I believe it can be interesting and teach us lessons that we can bring into our lifestyle. And if the information helps to nourish your lifestyle, then I will be very happy. Okay, thank you for listening to my explanation. I know you can't wait to see how to make this special dessert, ohagi. So let me share how to make tasty ohagi. Here are the ingredients and steps for this recipe. Half pounds of glutinous sweet rice, one third pounds of normal short grain rice, 1.4 US cups of water, half ounces of sugar, half teaspoons of salt, one pound of tsubuan, half smashed azuki bean paste, two ounces of soybean powder, half ounces of sugar, one pinch of salt, one ounce of grinded black sesame, one ounce of sugar and nourish seaweed. Okay, first make a half smashed mochi rice bowl. Please prepare half pounds of glutinous sweet rice called mochi rice, one sixth pounds of normal short grain rice, one third pounds of rice is a common unit of measurement used in Japan. The unit is called go. When you cook rice with a rice cooker, you need to know about this measurement. There is a scale on the inside of the bowl to measure the amount of water for the rice to cook. You should always know, use 1.2 times weight of the rice in water. So, to cook 2 third pounds of rice, you need 0.8 pounds of water. But, glutinous sweet rice needs less water than water for the same amount of normal short grain rice. So, it is better to cook mochi rice with a little less amount of water. Okay, so, we just measure the rice with the water. There is usually some remaining bran around the rice pieces. As time goes on, the bran can get oxidized and produce a smell when you cook the rice. You can prevent this smell by rinsing the rice. I know some of you might be concerned about the loss of nutrition by rinsing the rice. In this case, I'd say that it's not absolutely necessary to rinse your rice. After you finish the rinsing process, soak the rice in water for around 1 hour so that the rice can easily cook and become nicely sticky. After 1 hour has passed, strain the water. If you are not using it right away, put it in the container and keep it in the refrigerator. Put the soaked rice in the rice cooker and pour in the measured water. Or just pour water to slightly below the line for 2 cups of rice. As I said earlier, this measuring cup for rice in the rice cooker is different from the measuring cup in America. so. Please do not get them confused. Next, add in the measured sugar and salt and close the lid of the rice cooker. Okay, turn it on. When the rice has finished cooking, open the lid of the rice cooker. It looks so tasty already. Half smash the rice with the rice scooper like this. I think you often see completely smashed rice like mochi. 
But when it comes to ohagi, the texture of hard smashed rice makes it tastier. So my suggestion is to not stir it too much so that you can keep some of the rice shape. Uh, by the way, do you know why I mix a quarter of the weight of normal rice in mochi rice? There is a reason for doing that. This is to keep the cooked rice soft for longer. As you may know, if you make mochi with just mochi rice, it quickly hardens as it cools down. You can prevent this by mixing in some normal rice. But there is something to be mindful of. If you mix in too much normal rice, the texture becomes quite different from nicely sticky mochi. So I think the ratio 3 fourths of mochi rice and 1 fourth of normal rice is best to make ohagi. For when you make your own ohagi, please keep this in mind. Okay, smashing process is now complete. Now we are almost in the final process. Take 2 ounces of tsubuan. Uh, by the way, I think you can get tsubuan at any Japanese or Asian market. But if you have more energy to make your ohagi totally from scratch, I would suggest making tsubuan for yourself. As you can change the sweetness, hardness, and flavor for your own taste easily. I've uploaded a video on how to make tsubuan on my YouTube channel. If you are interested, please check it out. Now, I will show you an easier way to cover the rice bowl with tsubuan. After you take the tsubuan, put and spread it on a plastic wrap sheet. Okay, measure one ounce of rice and make it into a bowl like this. Before you touch the rice, it's better to put some water on your hands so that the rice doesn't stick to your hands. Then put the rice bowl on it and cover the rice bowl with tsubuan like this. Spread and squeeze the tsubuan softly to cover the whole surface of the rice bowl. It is done! It is so easy, isn't it? It looks cute and tasty. Then, I will show you another way to cover rice balls. Spread tsubuan on your palm and put the rice ball on top of it. Then, cover the ball. Okay, please watch carefully. It will be a little difficult for some people. Rotate the tsubuan clockwise as you push down the rice bowl with your right fingers like this. Then, you will cover the whole surface like this. Then, make it into a kind of oval shape. Comparing them to each other, it looks a little bit different. Hand covered ohagi looks better to me. Okay, next, I will show you another three kinds of the most popular ohagi. Soybean flavor, sesame flavor, and seaweed flavor. Please prepare these ingredients. Put two ounces of soybean powder in the bowl and add half ounces of sugar and one pinch of salt to it. Then mix it well. That's it! It's very easy, right? Okay, next, put one ounce of grinded black sesame in the bowl and add one ounce of sugar to it and mix it well. I grind the black sesame with a blender 
blending them just for a couple of seconds is now to make the flavor come out. Okay, then the last one is seaweed. <laughs> you don't need to mix anything with it. Next, we will do the opposite of what we did earlier. Cover tsuburan bowl with some rice. Measure one ounce of tsuburan and make it into a bowl. Then measure two ounces of the rice and spread it on your palm. Then cover the tsuburan bowl like this. I think it is easier than covering the rice bowl with tsuburan as rice stick to each other well. Repeat the same process as much as you want. Then, cover the rice balls with different powders. Put a decent amount of powder not only by rolling the ball in the bowl, but also by patting it with your hand. After you put enough powder, shape it nicely. The whole procedure is now complete. It looks very tasty, right? The tsuburan ohagi and the soybean powder ohagi are most typical and my favorite. The secret to make the soybean powder ohagi tastier is to add a little bit of salt in the mixture of soybean powder and sugar, as I mentioned earlier. The flavor of sesame is also very good. Nori seaweed ohagi is eaten mainly in the western side of Japan and it's good too. Okay, let me summarize the important points to make ohagi. First, the ratio of rice should be 3 fourths of mochi rice and 1 fourth of normal rice. Second, soak the rice in water long enough and cook it with a little less water. Third, half smash the cooked rice to keep the rice texture. Fourth, put a decent amount of powder on the rice balls. Okay, let me share some history about the custom of memorial services for ancestors in Japan. Ancient Japanese people often prayed to their ancestors and expressed their respect and gratitude in their daily lives. They did this so that their ancestors could stay in the spiritual world peacefully and protect their offspring. They also believed in the concept of reincarnation, which came from China Buddhism, which spread nationwide around 1500 years ago. Ohagi has been offered to ancestors on equinoxes since then. So, what is the relationship between the equinoxes, memorial services for ancestors, and ohagi? Uh, there is a way to divide the year into 24 seasons in accordance with the length of a day. There is spring equinox, summer solstices, autumn equinox, and the winter solstices. For us, there are certain days that are marked on the calendar, but ancient people lived more in nature compared to the people nowadays. My guess is they admire the significance of nature and watch the sun, moon, and stars carefully. This allows them to feel even the slightest changes in seasons. I think such days, especially related to the motion of the sun, could hold more meaning for them. As I mentioned earlier, Buddhism influenced Japan's way of thinking. 
In Buddhism, there is a teaching that says earthly heaven is a place located west and is called Higan. On equinox, the lengths of day and night are the same, and the sun rises from the exact east and sets on the exact west. So, ancient Japanese people thought that if they prayed toward the sunset on equinoxes, their prayers could reach the earthly heaven more easily than on any other day. They believe some ancestral spirits dwell in the spiritual world, and some of them are in heaven. So, praying toward the western earthly heaven at this time could be equal to praying directly to the ancestors. Gradually, this custom has spread nationwide. So, a week that includes the Mikrinox day and the three days before and after that day started to be called Higan. People prayed for their ancestors' happiness, especially during this period, and offered Ohagi. What I just explained is one of the theories on how and why the culture of Higan started in Japan. What impresses me is not the exact histories or theories, but how they observed nature and applied the sense of nature to their lifestyle. It's an amazing, interesting thing to me that ancient people worship the sun and the moon representing nature and try to correlate their lifestyle with it. You already know that Ohagi was offered to ancestors during Higan, but do you know the meaning of the ingredients? Ohagi is a round-shaped dessert made with rice and atsuki beans. As you already know, rice is commonly eaten around Asian countries as a staple food, and the culture to cultivate rice came to Japan over 2,000 years ago. It is said that Azuki started to be eaten in Japan around the same era, so it is easy to guess that both rice and azuki has been important crops for Japan. Also, it is commonly believed that the color red has a power to drive away negative energy. So, red is used in some areas of shrines and temples like this. The red color of azuki has the same meaning. So we can guess that a dessert made from rice and azuki beans is very special. It is nice to offer such a meaningful and tasty dessert to your ancestors. They will be happy. So, ohagi is often offered during Higan. Okay, thank you for watching this video. I hope this recipe and the information about Higan will be beneficial for you in some way. Okay, thank you.